There's no shortcuts, is there? There's no shortcuts. Well, shit, now you got YouTube and all that stuff to grab information. Back <laughs> yeah. then, yeah, that helps, it was yeah. just shit. It was just, you got to be around them guys, the great trainers. Yeah, I've been yeah. good to be around them. Or yeah. you didn't have YouTube videos and this and that. Nah, hell no, man. There's a <laughs> lot more education out there now. But, the, yeah. uh, but back but at then, the same, man, I had to be around the trainers. Yeah, But at the same time, even though there's more education, people are not taking advantage of not taking advantage. And I think coaching's on the decline. There's very few teachers out there now which is why it's so important to have people like yourself on the show because we need to keep this all knowledge going uh, for, you know, for people to learn because you know I've, I've been Manuel, studying the old school Manuel told me that 15 years ago <laughs> Manuel Stewart <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and Eddie Eddie used to tell me that too man back in the days fudge yeah they used to tell oh, well, me so, that. Oh, yeah. yeah they used to tell me so, so they I, I, they I, had I, these same I, concerns huh so they yeah. had these same concerns 15, 20 years ago and more. More. <laughs> wow. Yeah. More of the science is dying. I mean, uh, the teachers were, they were becoming extinct. You know, I, I remember all the great trainers back then. I pretty much knew them all. Been in camp with them, talked to them. And uh, you know what I mean? And so I didn't have YouTube uh, or, or uh, you know what I mean? Instagram or, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, man. I had to be in camp with them basically all the time. And, uh, you know, watching him, asking questions, uh, you know, all that, you know, all that stuff. And, and learned a lot on my own, you know what I mean? Studying tape and all that. Because back then yeah. we didn't have YouTube. So mm -hmm. I had to buy these cassette videos. And $50 a pop wow. costs a lot of money, man. I yeah. had over, what, 35,000 fights on video and DVD. 35,000, wow. So, so who are the main ones you studied? Was it was it Chavez, Senior, and Duran? Duran James Tony, everybody, Arguello, Ali, everybody, uh, Pernell mm. Whitaker, James Tony. I so studied the old timers like Benton. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Ruben Olivares, Arguello. Yeah. I mean, I studied all of them, man. All of them badasses back then. Shit, Salvador <coughs> so Sanchez. Great, great fights all. So, 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 so I've I've done breakdowns from pretty much every fight you've mentioned. So, how did you then? Because what I find is, is I almost feel like I'm spreading myself thin with lots of different fighters. So how do you then condense it all for your training when you're teaching people? Because you end up forgetting things you learn from one fighter because you're studying another fighter. Then you go study another fighter. I'll pick it up. You know, I'm training a guy. You know, he has a different, you know, are we, are we live now? Uh, it's not live. It's being recorded. So I just, I, I'll just oh, edit it before oh, I upload okay. it. <laughs> what I do is I'll go in the gym. I'll, I'll see what the fighter has, especially if I got a new guy. You know, Don Chargan always told me, hey, just kick back a couple of weeks, check him out, you know, get a feel for him. Then I start, uh, you know, uh, training him uh, the way he needs to be trained, what he needs to learn. Because I get a guy in the gym nowadays, like my two kids got right now. I sent you videos of them. Man, they're, oh, they got, nice. they're a raw and green. They no shit. They basically just yeah. fought off natural talent because the coaches uh, in Colombia, okay, they got a lot of great talent in Colombia and Venezuela. What, oh, uh, Antonio know? Cervantes comes to mind, doesn't he? The old uh, great oh, Colombian fighter yeah. Cervantes. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Antonio Cervantes. Yeah. Yeah. I met yeah. Him a few times oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Great fighter, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Cervantes. They got a lot of great champions, man. Back at the gym I used to train out of, uh, the quadrilateral gym, uh, when I moved there in 2018, it was considered the number one gym in. Colombian and in the Venezuela area, that gym produced numerous champions. Pineda, uh, uh, Rafael Pineda, the guy that knocked out Mayweather, uh, the guy that knocked out Marlon Starling. Golly, my buddy, man, he was there. I mean, uh, uh, Bassa, uh, the guy that knocked out Macaulay in, uh, in Ireland. They had a lot of champions over there, man. Natural, uh, a lot of natural raw talent. Over there, and they had a you know, the Columbia has a history of a lot of champions, man. They got a lot yeah. of good because they're poor and hungry, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not like the states where you know, if it doesn't work out, you could always find something easier, okay? Over there, they uh uh, there was that they had to make it, man. They had yeah. to make it, you know what I mean? They were poor, they were hungry, they had to make it, man. There was no other option of going to college or getting a nice job. Uh, you know, in IT or the oil fields making 150000 a year. Nah. 
Uh, the average salary in Colombia is 300 bucks a month. <laughs> okay. In <laughs> Venezuela, when I was over there, oh, that was hard, man. All the Venezuelans were escaping the poverty over there. You know, the high inflation, a thousand, over a thousand percent a year. And yeah. that economy was broke. The people were broke. They were hungry. So a lot of them started mi uh, migrating to Barranquilla, right by the border. And man, it was a lot of the fighters too. And, yeah. you know, they were telling me the average salary there is $20 a month. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a lot of great fighters in that gym I had over there. A lot of, I, man, I had a lot of good fighters. I had probably like 20 pros, four or wow, five were in the top guys. 10. Oh, yeah. Wow. It was the number one gym. And I had a lot of sparring, a lot of good talent, uh, a lot of, you know, three, three or four guys were in the top 10. A lot of guys upcoming in the four, six, the eight rounds. Tough Venezuelan, Colombian kids, man. One of the kids that showed up in the middle of the night was the guy uh, when I was there. We had a blackout there. So, you know, everybody, you know, I lived in the apartments across the street. So in the, the gym we were at, they had the bottom floor gym. It was, oh, God, it was miserable. But anyway, <laughs> it was a poor gym. Oh. But upstairs, the fighters lived in the, the sleeping quarters. Mm. Okay? <sighs> Jesus. If you've ever been to Barranquilla, Colombia, it's right by the equator. The heat is intense. Uh, yeah, it's right by the Caribbean. The humidity, the heat, and the fighters lived in the miserable conditions. Just, a ma you know, mattresses on the floor torn up. Um, <laughs> Ugh, it was just miserable. And they lived in them conditions with no air conditioning. All right? Mm, when oh, I got wow. there, they had no air. They, they used to put up with that shit because that's all they had. It's better than living on the street. And the yeah. owner of the gym... He guaranteed them two meals a day. Yeah. Uh, the lunchtime meal and the dinner time around 4.30. Yeah, that's all they ate. Yeah, if you wanted to eat food, extra stuff, well, that's on you, man. You know, you go find your own food, you know. So I used to buy them bananas and fruits, you know, just to help them okay. with the hunger. between Yeah, them. yeah. And the fighters there were so poor. A lot of them, they're running. I said, let me see your shoes. They had holes in their shoes at the bottom. Wow. And these were good fighters. <laughs> yeah. These were good fucking fighters. Excuse my language. These were good fighters. <laughs> no, like, you're, 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 okay. you're okay to um, if you want to. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'll try to. <laughs> no, it's okay. You, you can, it's okay. I don't, I don't mind it. I mean, I don't okay, know. I, I, don't, try don't, don't my, I try to tame down my... You know, because boxing, you know, you get emotional. And, yeah, that's and fine. Just, I, I, I don't mind it at all. You, you, you carry on. <laughs> man, I was shocked, man. I was shocked. I'm like, man, this is really what poor is about. I thought, you know, you know, you go to the States, you know, luxury, uh, you know, everybody, you know, nice houses, food, galore, cars and all that. You don't have that in Colombia. Nah, man. Uh -uh. A, lot of, a lot of times when I was there. I spent a lot of money out of my pocket buying them, buying them running shoes, buying them food, buying them supplies, buying them equipment. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the owner of the gym, man, he he was cheap, okay? Mm. He, he wanted to spend minimum as a minimum uh, as possible in everything. You know, he didn't want to invest in them fighters. That's why they lived in the that miserable, the miserable conditions upstairs. First, one of the first things I did when I got there, I bought like a hundred dollars of cleaning supplies, and I told every single one of them. There were like thirteen guys that lived in them. Uh, what do you call it? I call them the slums. That's what basically it was. And I said, "You guys clean this." You know, I told them, "You guys clean this shit up," and I better see it clean. The bathroom was disgusting. I can even. I, I I wouldn't even wear my big cow. I wouldn't even wear combat boots in there, man. In the shower area on the first floor, man, I I would. It was disgusting. And I told him, man, you clean this area up. So I had him clean it up, man, and started you know organizing that place uh, to have some discipline and structure. Because when I got there, uh, one of the reasons uh, I I moved there, I wanted to get out of the states because of the you know. That the change of culture and attitude. I think I thought the fighters were getting a little soft and uh, entitled. Okay. So I wanted to move there because my friend of mine was telling me about it. And I always knew Columbia always had good fighters. They always needed opportunity. So when I went there, uh, the owner of the gym, you know, he welcomed me in open hands. 
and pay me 75 bucks a week. Uh, but you know, I'm good. I, I really didn't need the money. I'm good. So, but I ain't going to do it free. So he pay me like 300 bucks a month and to train all the guys. Cause, uh, what happened was, uh, Gil, you know, uh, the fighters weren't perform performing to their potential yeah. and Mendoza, Mendoza recognized that, you know, Mendoza, Gilberto, the WBA president. Okay. Yeah. Gilberto, he's the W yeah. You know, he does a lot of stuff for the fighters over there in Colombia and Venezuela because he's, you know, that's where the WBA is from. And the fighters weren't, you know, they weren't fighting to their potential. So when I got there, I changed everything, man. It was a shock. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I brought some structure, some organization. Yeah. And a lot of the fighters were just fighting off talent and balls and heart and what little they knew. So I taught them the fundamentals, starting with the footwork. OK, mm. working off the jab. OK, the importance of defense, throwing the combinations uh, correctly, uh, inside fighting. A lot of them, they didn't know how to inside fight. They just got inside and started slow, you know, slugging away what? like a street fight. They didn't have they didn't have the skills or technique or the, or the fundamentals on knowing how to fight at close distance. So mm. once I started, uh, even even the guys that were in the top 10. And once I started working with them guys, they started getting better and better, better fast because them guys had a lot of experience under their belt, but they just had, didn't have the right teaching. And yeah. guys that are veteran fighters that have, uh, what do you call it? The experience under their belt, their learning curve is a lot shorter. They learn faster. They pick it up mm. where you got a beginner guy. God dang, man. You got, you know, you got to be real patient, but the veteran guys, like a guy had a uh, Hugo, Barrario. You know, once he started, I started to teach him to fight inside. He started becoming proficient, proficient, picked it up real quick. Within three months, he was getting in the pocket and banging away, uh, you know, and defending himself and executing good fundamentals and technique in the pocket and everything. And, you know, and within two or three months, Mendoza saw that. He goes, man, yeah, yeah, I can see the fighters, man. Uh, yeah. they're getting better and better and they're starting to fight their, to their potential and everything, but I, they just needed, cause the coaches they had in their in the gym, were great guys, man, but they just didn't have the, uh, the, the background, the training I had okay. to teach these guys. Okay. They're basically was their, their, their training is just get the fighters in shape and let the fighters fight out their natural God given talent. Yeah. That's they so, know how to play. Shit. yeah. I think that's quite common nowadays, isn't it? It's, it's, it's almost like a lot of trainers are becoming more for fitness, just as long as you're fit to fight. And they're not doing as much of the uh, technical and mental side of the game as they, as they used to. Yeah, I would say that. They're becoming uh, fitness coaches more like they just get you in shape for the fight. Yeah, they don't yeah, teach yeah. you the finer aspects of uh, the fundamentals, uh, defense, which is most important. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just fighting so, so, a little bit small. So so Go so ahead. where are you now? Have you moved back to Mexico now? Have you? Yeah, I'm in Mexico. I'm in Leon, Mexico, in the mountains. We train at six thousand feet altitude. Then uh, when we get when we uh, trans when I when I change camps, you know, to get ready for bigger fights, we'll go to Mexico City with higher altitude, seventy five hundred feet, and wow. a lot of tough sparring. And let me tell you, it's <laughs> yeah. hard to train it. It's hard yeah. to train at this altitude. The wow. air is thin. And you go to Mexico City, the air is thin. Then you spar all them tough physical fighters there. A lot of fighters in the States can do it. They can, you know, they spar 10, 12 rounds, brag about it. So come up here and do it. You won't be able to do it. Because I've seen them. I've seen guys from the States. They come here. And after two rounds, what's wrong? I'll give you an example. I was up there, uh, uh, some top prospect from New York. He was up there. He went to go train there. And... He didn't know nothing about the high altitude. He found out real quick the first day of sparring after two rounds. What's wrong? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Man. After two rounds, he got out. He goes, I don't know what's wrong, man. He goes, I, I you know, in uh, New York, I was doing eight to ten rounds. I said, brother, this ain't New York. This is high altitude, Mexico City, 7,500 feet, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's totally different here, man. Yeah. So, so how long do they need to adjust typically? You got to be here. You got to live here. Yeah. The okay. longer, the better, because your body has got to go through a, a change. Uh, you know, what's that called when your body goes through a change? Um, adjustment period. Yeah, adjustment period where your body 
gets used to the thin air and it uh, uh, adapts, okay? Where, you, where you're breathing better, where your, your muscles get stronger, where your lungs get stronger, uh, where you're building more red blood cells up in your body. See, what happens is uh, uh, when you train at high altitude, your body's got to adjust. So what it does is it develops more red blood cells in your body. Red yeah. blood cells are the, uh, are the cells that deliver the oxygen the to the oxygen, yeah. And mm. the more you have in your spleen, it keep, you know, pop, 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 keeps popping out. You know what I mean? The red blood cells for your oxygen, mm. that, for you to get that oxygen. But your body's got to go through that metamorphosis change where it builds up the red blood cells in your spleen. That's why uh, you've seen guys like Sanchez. You ever see him get tired in a fight? The Salvador Sanchez? Salvador. Yeah. No, never. Guys like him rounds. and Pedroza, Sabia Pedroza. Pedroza, the last few rounds, he'd be fighting even harder. Yeah, but he trained in Panama, yeah. That's a sea level, but Sanchez. Oh, was he at sea level? Was he um, Pedroza? Yeah, he was a sea Panama level. Panama sea level. In, uh, okay, Panama. that's interesting. So, yeah. wonder how he got that gas tank then. <laughs> Probably training that in the in the hot climate of Panama. That does that helps out a lot too, man. Breathing that you know that you know is that you know because of the heat and the and, and the humidity that restricts your airflow. Yeah, because he yeah. he may be one one of the best that in the last few like those, those championship round fifteen round fights last few rounds. He seemed to step it up a gear even even more. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He's physically gifted too. Come on. I mean, he's five foot ten, <laughs> long and rangy. I mean, yeah. he's a Pedres, Pedrosa was a very good fighter and a very dirty fighter too, if you notice, man. Yeah. He, that sucker would elbow you. He would hit you on the hips. Mm. He knew every trick in the book to win. And he did every, anything, he did whatever it took to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, so, so that would be that would have been interesting, uh, Pedro versus Sanchez, because they, they arguably would have would have would have faced each other had Sanchez not passed away. Yeah, Ooh, that would have been a fight, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Sanchez was a he was a just tremendous poise yeah. and composure, calmness, stoic. He never changed his expression, whether he was tired yeah. or whether he got hurt. It was just. You know what I mean? Real calm, real cool. But he trained. He trained in that high altitude of Mex uh, right outside Mexico City in his hometown, yeah. Santiago Tiago Lestenko. Yeah, eighty yeah. thousand, eight thousand five hundred feet. Yeah. I mean, is, is is it true he used to like do eight miles every uh, six days a week? Eight miles of running. Yeah, in that altitude, yeah, that's wow. normal. Yeah, that's... that's normal. The thing in Mexico too, you don't understand. You don't have this shit over there. Not only is it how I altitude, we run the mountains from the bottom to the top around 6.1 miles. Can you try it? Running up, try it at sea level, running up the mountains. Now come yeah. to altitude and do it. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's a different level of conditioning, man. Your legs are stronger. Your lungs are in, in better condition. Your, your body's physically stronger. Oh, yeah. Mm. I take my guys to the mountains over there. Right outside Leon, it starts at six thousand and it ends at nine thousand. All the way wow, <laughs> six point one miles, yeah, Damn. ten point ten point five eleven kilometers, yeah, 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 straight up. There's no flat, dude. It, it, it ain't like it's just, yeah. <laughs> oh, could you imagine doing that? Yeah, no. <laughs> and you go fight at sea level. Yeah, that's why I like training up here is the altitude, you know. You can do all that shit, all the strength conditioning, the burpees and all that modern day stuff, man. But it's the environment we're in that you can't substitute, you know what I mean? Yeah. I and, and, and Sanchez's style. Sanchez's style. Sanchez's style. Was not was it not a, t not a typical Mexican style of fighting, really, was it? You know, you get the Mexican Boxer style. Intelligent. Yeah, yeah. He was an intelligent boxer, counterpuncher, man. And, and everything, you know, was his jab. He feinted beautifully, threw his combinations beautifully. He countered beautifully, and he can hit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sa Salvador was a beautiful combination puncher, but he could punch. He was a clean See, a puncher, guys, wasn't he? Well, he was Salvador could punch. Yeah. He was a beautiful combination puncher. He had a great chin. Uh, always kept his poise and composure. Strong mental character, uh, resilient competitor, uh, you know what I mean? And just and very intelligent, always adapt to his, the fighter he was fighting. But beautiful footwork, man, you know, in, out, in and out, boss, boss in circles, 
kept that, you know, worked off that jab, worked beautiful feints. Man, you don't yeah. see that. That's that's American style. That's Mexicans. You rarely see a fighter like that. And Salvador did that back in the early eighties, wasn't he? He started in the seventies, in the early eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. He was a beautiful boxer puncher, man. I don't know if you saw his fight with the Zoom and Nelson. Yeah, seen that. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> that was Nelson. No one knew Nelson. about Nelson as well, did they? And he came out and he he fought amazingly well. But at the end, Sanchez's gas tank sort of overpowered him right at the end, and um, Sanchez won and the his, fight. Yeah, and his experience. Yes, mm, yeah. Nelson was only thirteen and zero going into that. Correct. Fight. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, but yeah, but he had the physical gifts to compete with Sanchez. The physical strength, the punching power, the chin, and the mental character. Oh, you know, who needs experience when you got that? You know what I mean? That. He only had 13 fights, but that's like a guy with 40 fights when you got all those God-given gifts. You know what I mean? You don't that, that's um, so it's an interesting point uh, you raised there, because I want to ask you a question, also of your knowledge and experience. When you just mentioned about Zuma Nelson, well, who needs experience? If, if, if you had a fighter um, with uh, yeah, much experience, and they were going up against someone with a lot of, a lot of experience, what would be, would would you recommend that they go and put pressure on the more experienced fighters to sort of close that experience gap? How would you sort of get around that issue of finding someone a lot more experienced? On the fighter's talent level. You know, it depends on the fighter's talent level. You know, if you got a guy, for example, who's tall and rangy, you don't want to take it to that guy. You know, you're fighting this fight. You're evening the playing field. But if you got the gifts to keep it at range and distance and work out that job effectively, use your footwork to move in and out of range so you don't get hit. You know, move your footwork to step back and counter. Uh, use your jab to set up your combination. Pivot around them. Keep turning them. You know what I mean? That's a hard, hard guy to beat, especially if you're tall and rangy. It's hard to get to. You know what I mean? Then if you teach a guy, you know, how to uh, good defensive skills when he gets closer, you know, like, moving the head, blocking the punches correctly, you know, rolling with the punches, the shoulder roll and all that, add more defensive skills. Yeah, you got a hot, yeah, yeah, it, dep it depends. And, and it, me, it depends on the mentality of the fighter, okay? Uh, me, I'll, I'll know it, man. Yeah, okay. He might lack the experience, but you know what I mean? He's got that belief in him, okay? He's got that mindset, that confidence that, you know, he, the other guy might got experience, but he don't care. Okay, because what he's got is going to be better than what his opponent has, even though the guy got more experience. You know what I mean? But, you know, you got to have a feel for that, man. Sometimes you can't rush the guy, too. You might think the guy's better than what he is. Have you seen that before? They rush the guy. They think yeah. he's better than what he is. Then he gets knocked off his block. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Depends on the fighter. A guy like Nelson, shit, I would have threw him in because I don't. <laughs> bad dude, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? 